Hey, everybody. Before we get to our episode today, I wanted to share with you about an exciting movie that is coming out on September 17th. It is called Blue Bayou. It's from award-winning writer and director Justin Chan, who also stars in the movie Blue Bayou. It is the moving and timely story of a uniquely American family fighting for the future. It stars a character named Antonio LeBlanc, a Korean-American adoptee raised in a small town in the Louisiana Bayou, who's married to the love of his life, Kathy, and stepdad to their beloved daughter, Jessie. Struggling to make a better life for his family, he must confront the ghosts of his past when he discovers that he could be deported from the only country he has ever called home. It's inspired by true events, and Blue Bayou shines an important light on the impact our immigration policies have on American families today. Blue Bayou stars Justin Chan and Alicia Vikander and is in theaters starting September 17th. For tickets and more information, visit bluebayoufilm.com and listen to the Blue Bayou interview episodes on Dear Asian Americans, Korean American Parenting, and The Chan Chi Show. Thanks, and here now is our episode. Uh, I remember because of those arguments we had, like then the few nights that mom and dad would yeah, go gosh, would try go. to go out for dinner, <laughs> and then we would get into it over something. I remember being hit with a road, one of those old fashioned rotary. Nathan, <laughs> one uh, of those, one of those dial phones, and it's like you hit oh, your sister with a rotary, rotary phone. Yeah, <laughs> like the we base are of not it? ages on this show, guys. <laughs> No, Doesn't matter that, what kind a, of phone it was. That's okay. a heavy piece of tech. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to The John Chi Show, hosted by three Korean-American adoptees diving headfirst into what it means to be adopted, Korean, American, and more. And now, here's your hosts, Nathan, Patrick, and KJ. All right, here we go. Hello, and welcome back to The John Chi Show. I am your host, Patrick Armstrong, and it is a wonderful September afternoon, and I am joined here today by my favorite co-hosts, Nathan Nowak and KJ Relke. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Doing well. We're here in Carrollton, Texas, where the temperature is currently 89 degrees. It is partly cloudy, and the high today is an expected 97, and the low is 68, so make sure that you wear your sunscreen. Back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, KJ. Thank and we're going to go ahead and that. kick it over to Denver, Colorado, for our <laughs> correspondent, Nathan, in the field. Nathan, how's the weather out there? The weather is perfect. 75 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Uh, wow. One I'm mile jelly. above sea level. We are doing okay and wearing our sunscreen. Thank you for that, KJ. That is a good reminder. That is our daily PSA for you all. Wear sunscreen. Yeah, protect your face yeah. from the sun. I like that it was wet, one weather thing and then one factual thing about Denver. <laughs> one mile above sea level. <laughs> Hilarious. Hence the word mile high city. There you go. Okay. Somebody grew up with an en- encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know in the stadium there's actually a row of seats that is a different color and that is actually one mile level elevation at the row of seats? In course. Yeah. There course you go. Field. Another trivia fact by Nathan Nowak. And that has been Trivia with Nathan <laughs> Noak of the John Chi Show. Such an excellent show. We're going to go ahead Thanks and kick for it. Thanks for listening, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and kick it back to Nathan, though, and he's going to explain to our new listeners what John Chi means. Dual John Chi is where we took the word from. The John Chi is that's the... that's actually true. I don't, I don't know, know if that is. is. We here. said that a few you times. You can't say that. I say that. That's that. where yeah, I came no. up with it, I thought. No. It's dual it, John Chi. John Chi but... I think that's just like saying day... That's like that's like saying like uh day we took the word from birthday me and you're like no those are they are separate words that stand on their own but okay also I will to be together okay granted since we came up with that I have heard the word John Chi used in other forms and words and sentences other than Dol John Chi but at the time that was the only way use I guess I knew of that word but doesn't matter. The word itself means feast, <laughs> festival, party. You guys can come up with however you want it to, to mean to you, but we are celebrating yeah, our career. mistranslate Korean. the word. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's what our show is about. No, uh, that's about discovery and maybe coming up with something incorrect and then correcting ourselves or discovering a new part of the culture that we didn't know was, uh, you know, different than we originally had thought. But the Junchi show is mostly just us discovering that we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, especially with pro- the pronunciation of Hanbok. 
I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think Which, I, I'm yeah. actually yeah. Been hear... practicing it a lot since we got back. Oh yeah, that's good. That comes right. up so commonly, and no, you're actually I, I guess as you're wrong so many times. <laughs> so like, I will not mess this up. Actually, that yeah. makes sense because you probably were telling a lot of people what you did in LA, so you mm-hmm. would have to have had to have said hanbok many times. Yeah. Yes. that makes sense. That is good. Like, otherwise, that really does not come up in in conversation often. It does not. <laughs> it's okay. I, I've been using a few things that I learned from our our live show as well. To what have you been using? To like the the uh, Janchi, the rock, meaning the, well, the, coming from yeah. Doljanchi. <laughs> no, just like the food and the things like that. Uh, you know, just talking about what we had and what we did. I mean, even the fact that you know when when we did uh, Norabong that you know I was explaining that it's not karaoke; it's Norabong. So it's so hard to not or to try and explain what Norabong is, and then not just <laughs> go to like you just have to be like it's karaoke. It's karaoke, but Korean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just like I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I know. It's 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 hard to explain it, but I mean, what do you say? Oh, you're singing in a room to, explain, to but... music and you're singing along. Uh, yeah, it's Here's my thing with it. It's like when I explain what it is, people will go, "Well, why don't you just call it Korean karaoke?" And it's like <laughs> It's, but yeah. it's, that's not, but it's I not. don't know actually why. KJ, do you know why? Like, if that's just a word in Korean for singing while drunk in a group? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the official um, like, like translation. translation of that would be. No, um, um, I'm actually, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure. Where the heck is, okay. No, re, bang. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's uh, like, no, re is how you say song in korean so mm. i don't know if it's like oh maybe actually i think um there's a place here in Carrollton called sing box karaoke so i think actually it's like norebang is literally like a singing box ah. so ah. i would say that i would say that the reason that you would say norebang over karaoke is um like when you say karaoke here in america you like everybody gets a very particular image in their head about right. what that looks like right that's often not what Norebang actually is because Norebang is a private room and like it's just like is a different experience, even though the thing that you're doing, which is singing publicly while probably drunk, um, is like the shared thing, but like the the rest of the atmosphere is different. So it's like saying, Oh, I'm going to eat Mexican food versus I'm going to eat Japanese food. Like you're technically still eating, but you wouldn't call a sushi place a Mexican food restaurant, you know. Right. Okay. That hmm. makes sense. So I think I would- that's why you would say that i was thinking it also has to do with the fact that the some of the songs are korean songs whereas if you went to you know karaoke you probably wouldn't have a, a whole menu of songs in korean that were like k-pop or things like that so i mean uh, we sang like pretty much all english songs oh, I know. Notre Dame, so. <laughs> but <laughs> I like, but my point is that there korean is korean the songs? option to sing the korean songs whereas if you went to karaoke you would not have as much of an option for that sure yeah so Probably Japanese songs. Probably Japanese Wait, songs, exactly. That's karaoke is Japanese, right? Like yeah. Traditionally? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of my Japanese friends in high school, he was like, oh, you mean karaoke? I was like, yeah, dang it. Sorry, man. Sorry <laughs> for just karaoke. butcherizing. Yes. Dang it. Butcherizing, we can actually butchering pronounce your that, that language. Language. Ameri- Westernized it hard. <laughs> yeah. How, do you, how did you pronounce Sorry. it? Karaoke. 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 Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give up on that so, real quick. Also, he had like the most... <laughs> the most fun Japanese name because it rhymed and like was the same syllables. And I was like, this is, you have a very fun name. That's nice. So I'm not going to say it on air for his anonymity. But you don't want to dox him. We don't no. do that here on the show. It's fine. No, we, we ain't about that. Just Unless our, we are just ourselves, just ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, all of that talk aside, we have a really, really great interview uh, coming up here in just a second. Uh, Amy Nowak Sherman is our guest know. today. Okay. <laughs> um, Nathan's sister. Nathan, do you want to talk a little bit about what? Give give the guests a little bit of a hint of what we're gonna be. They're gonna be hearing. Uh, disclaimer: Anything that my sister has said about me may it's or may not be true. true. Okay, it's ninety eight percent true. <laughs> no, it was it was really nice. This was actually not only um, you know the second uh, family member that we have now had on the show um, after Patrick's sister Rebecca, but. It was the first time we had done a live recording because my sister was visiting, um, and so we actually did it in person. So I really liked that um, ability to interview her in person and look at her and you know laugh together. So that was really fun. Uh, but yeah, no, it was Are a you great. Interview. Our laughter 
over Zoom is less than <laughs> the laughter that you shared with your sister? How dare you? I think wow. it's the timing more I'm never so. going to laugh again. Not even <laughs> on Zoom, but just in my, la- in my whole life. Yeah. I'm just done laughing. You've ruined laughter for Patrick. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was really good. Uh, you know, she spoke about a lot of uh, things that actually I had not thought about and um, things that we hadn't talked about. So it was good to to get those uh, that dialogue going. So, um, yeah, I really appreciated her being here and being on the show. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who are listening who are like, hey, when is – we know that you did this whole thing in L.A. When do we get to hear about it or see it or oh, yeah. anything beyond just your IG stories? That will be coming out in two weeks, give or take some days. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. We have another episode planned for next week, and then the week after that, we will drop some content recorded live in L.A. Yeah, and thank you again out. to everybody who came out. That was that was amazing. That was a good time. We'll talk more about it soon. Yeah, we'll only thank you once here, and that's it. That's yeah, all the that's thanks it. you will get, but thank you. <laughs> um, we got some good episodes coming out. Uh, oh, yeah. Up the pipeline. Up the pipeline? Coming down the pipeline? Down the down pipeline. The pipeline. <laughs> coming on down. We're clogging it up. We're, we're free flowing. It's going Gross. up and down. <laughs> we are flowing free. And speaking of flowing free, we're going to flow okay. freely into the interview with Amy Nolak Sherman. Here it is, Vamos. our interview with the person I just said. Escucha ahora. Welcome back to the John Chi Show interview portion. Today we are here with Amy Sherman, my sister. Paladino! JK. Why, why do you not, keep saying that? Not the, <laughs> not the creator of Gilmore Girls. So did, did you very, know that there was another important. Amy Sherman out there? I had no idea, but whatever. Oh, okay, nice. like Amy Sherman Paladino, back. there you go. This is I Amy can't, Sherman. I can't not think about it. This is Amy Sherman, adopted Korean, my sister from Oklahoma, and I'll stop there because that's, I don't want to tell her story for her. But. So many hyphenated <laughs> words for a last name. That's ridiculous. That's a wild oh, last goodness, name. Okay, I don't even I think I can repeat it. it. If I laugh too much. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. This is the first time we are trying uh, a semi-live recording where Amy is actually here with me visiting uh, the family. And so we are sitting next to each other. And uh, for the listeners, this is uh, this is a new thing. So, oh, and you'll be grateful I didn't have to set this up because we never get this done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it is a new thing, so hopefully it still sounds the same. Uh, but Amy, like every story uh, on our or every start of our podcast, I guess we like to find out about your adoption story. And there's a lot that I don't know, so feel free to oh, share yeah, whatever you want. Um, I know most of it already. Okay, well, yeah, well, you know most of it. I will be the judge of that. <laughs> okay i need to not Man, this sibling dynamic is wild <laughs> i'm having a great time oh yeah this will be a woo. i'm having a great um, time <clears throat> all right well i came through um i guess i don't know the name of the agency before it was dylan international but the same one that nathan came through i just came through it in 19 about three years before he did I was one of the first uh, Korean adoptees placed at what's now Dillon International in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I actually, I was supposed to be adopted as a baby, but that didn't quite work out. I got held up in, you know, like red tape, government red tape and that kind of thing. So I didn't come until I was a year old. Um, And then I don't remember, obviously don't remember much of that, but I just know I came in January I was a year old, so it was January of 1974. And if you want to know how old I am, you can do the math because I was born in 1973. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible at math. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. And we're not ageist on the show, so no problem. Right? Yeah. Well, we're ages if someone's older than me. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not fair because wow. you're the one that's supposed to tell me wow. what my children look like when I can't see them anymore. Nathan's <laughs> been waiting 50 plus episodes to say that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, I mean, oh I gosh. was brought I was brought over and adopted, you know, by, you know, obviously our parents, Gerhard and Caroline Nowak and I had a wonderful, wonderful upbringing, you know, with them. And, and then it was great when Nathan came along, you know, because I had, 
I had somebody to play with. So it was really cool <laughs> until we started taking my toys. But that's a story for another episode. <laughs> what can I say? Nice. I like Barbies. No, no it was G.I. Joe would come in and kill everyone at dinner. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds about right. Yeah, and then and then of course him trying to teach me how to play video games, which I'm an absolute disaster at. So, but I like watching people play them. So you know, oh, I just can't do it myself. I can't figure out the controls, so I panic, and it's not good. And then I die. And Nathan's like, "I didn't know you could die there." And I said, "Well." I just <laughs> and and so we had a lot of fun because there weren't a lot of other Asian families in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, which is just north of Tulsa, where we were raised. And there weren't a whole lot of Asian families in town at the time. I mean, there was another family, but they were, I think um, they were half, the kids were half Vietnamese. Mom was Vietnamese and dad was not. And so we didn't go to the same school or anything. So when I started school, I was the only, I was the only Asian in, in my class. And I think the only Asian in school. So I'm pretty sure I raised the popu Asian population of Bartlesville, Oklahoma to like maybe two per I was like the second one. So it's just like 2%, <laughs> you know, so I was like, woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was interesting when I started school, because that's when I first started noticing I was different. And of course we didn't have Nathan mm -hmm. yet at the time. He didn't come along till December of 1976. So I was happy to have a playmate actually you know, we could hang out, we could play and, and it became pretty quickly became my job. Hey, can you watch Nathan so I can cook dinner? Sure. I guess. <laughs> Do you have a I lot guess. of memories? Do you have memories before I came along? Like just being uh, by yourself? Not really. Um, because that was a really long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I mean, you were young, so. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I remember going places with mom and dad. I remember some of the, you know, trips to Wisconsin and some of the, you know, like some of the things I did, but not really. I okay. mean, not really. And of course I was in an orphanage when I was born, I was brought to an orphanage. And so I've been asked the question, you know, by people I've grown up with people I know, well, you know, did, do you ever want to find your, your birth family? And I never really you know, it was never really an issue because I always knew that I was I was brought to the orphanage. So mm. probably the only name that they would give me was whoever brought me there. And I don't even know if that's a family member. So I'm I'm content with my adoptive parents as my parents. And I really don't have any desire to really look into that. I don't know why. I'd like to visit Korea someday, but I don't really have any great desire to do research and try to find out if there's anyone living or anybody, mm -hmm. I just, it's just, I don't know. I think yeah. it's probably because I might not uncover very much. Do you still mm -hmm. have paperwork? Cause I found one piece of paper from my adoption that had some information on it. Do you have any, cause I know our parents kept pretty good records. Yeah, of, they really of, did. I was like, wow, you really. Yeah. I mean, I even had a, a, <laughs> a lock of hair in my Folded what? Oh, and, I used to, but I think it too? fell out or did, I I disappeared or something. You like have that. hair too? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really weird, hair. like a baby book what? that has... Somebody give me some hair. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> just anyone though. Just I thought that was weird Previous though. guests of the show or whatever, just send, well, me, some, yeah, send I, me some okay, hair. That's I, fine. Think, I don't know where I the line is. So don't forget me now. Now we're getting a little weird. We left the line. KJ just went into creepy. We left the line I but a, yeah, I think hair. I That's remember fine. when I was a little kid, I found this this little envelope that mom had taped into like the one part of mm -hmm. the photo album. And and I was like, oh, mom, why is there hair in here? Don't take that out. Yeah, it needs to stay there. OK, <laughs> I took it out. So, <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure I did, too. Yeah. Or like, Nathan and I played with it and probably glued it to some piece of artwork we were doing. I don't know. I don't know. Probably burn uh, but yeah, we didn't burn it. I don't know because I don't remember ever doing that. Magnifying but. glass. I don't know. Amy, so uh, I did see his last stuff. But. Amy, I have a question. Um, we sure. had a guest. We had a guest on Jennifer Patel, and she was adopted through Dylan. And she said that when she was adopted, it was right after I think Nathan had been adopted. Her parents came and visited your family uh, before they adopted her. Do you remember that? 
No. You've been a little bit older. I, did, I was just wondering because I just... Her as, parents probably came while I was at school or something like that because I don't remember them ever <laughs> visiting. And, hey, thanks, Mom and Dad. You're telling me that. <laughs> no, I think they said you were there and I was there as well. Um, but they said just as any I kids, don't remember we wouldn't that. really pay attention to... Right. Uh, yeah. you because know, they didn't have any kids at the time for us to play with. So yeah. We, we were just, oh, it's a bunch of adults <laughs> you know? coming. Yeah, yeah exactly. We probably later. would have said, hi, we bye. We'll like, be back here Nathan watching TV. Nathan and I are going to go. He's yeah, going to go teach me how to play Joe some video v. Barbie. games. We'll yeah. <laughs> Does G.I. Joe teach Barbie Kung Fu? Who knows? Maybe they'll I team don't up know. and be Cobra. Possibly. Maybe they won't. Our parents did have, they had a lot of like, I wouldn't call them parties, but they did have events occasionally where we would get uh, um, really? locked into the bedroom. Soirees. Yeah, we would get locked into oh, the back yeah, bedroom. Oh, yeah, they had the occasional dinner parties. Where this is like a, a Thursday yeah. night yeah. Pequino we group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were allowed to have like, it's like should bring in potato chips. Yeah. And, this, and we got like, like the appetizers and stuff. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was, like if it was a party for them, it was so also could, a party like, for you. Like play video games. They just said, don't open this door. Yeah. It goes to the <laughs> other, yeah, at the end of the hallway of yeah. our house, you know, the houses back in the seventies, you know, they weren't all open like that. So there was a, a doorway, doors, yeah. you know, for the hallways to the bedrooms are, we were just to stay back there. So mom bribed us with all these treats and stuff like nice. that. So we yeah. would just like, don't come into Narnia. We would just, yeah. we would just board games, board games watch games. TV. Oh, yeah, we watched watch TV. A lot of TV. Yeah, it was all good. Yeah, until- the four channels that we had on TV, <laughs> and then you had to walk to the TV to change the channel. Turn the dial. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like they didn't give us a remote control. I was like, what kind of setup is this? <laughs> it was all good until the one the next day when I went into the refrigerator looking for something and saw oh lemonade and found out it was a margarita mix and not oh lemonade. yeah, mom's. <laughs> <laughs> I spit that out real quick. Yeah. My first taste of tequila. Yeah. You like At tequila age now? What? I don't like know. Nine? <laughs> Probably. Young enough that it wasn't tasty. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> um but uh yeah, I'm just I'm curious on other memories that you had from um childhood like the families like you're saying. I was the same way. We didn't have many Asian um, there were more by the time you started school, so you didn't. Maybe you didn't one or face, two. Yeah, but you didn't like face four, as much of the everybody looking at you like you were different when you first started school, and that's when I really started noticing that's like, okay, mm-hmm. this is kind of different. At what age do you think you've started noticing more of that? Just when like I kindergarten? was in kindergarten. Oh, okay. when I was in preschool, mm-hmm. I didn't notice so much because there was there was one little girl that was I think she might have been Indian, probably from Phillips Petroleum Company. Okay. And then it's like she was in preschool and then maybe they moved and she was never there again. It's like, that's not fair. You moved, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My backup. <laughs> Thanks a lot for staying, you know? Right? Yeah. But no, seriously. I started to... noticing that in kindergarten because I got questions, I, you know, like you could just tell by the way the other kids would kind of look at you first, yeah. you know, maybe, yeah. but nothing was ever said. And the kindergarten teacher was great. Mm-hmm. I didn't really start noticing anything till first grade because my first grade experience wasn't the greatest because the teacher didn't really care for, I guess, Koreans. Cause I think her brother had fought, uh, I guess oh. maybe in the Korean war or something like that. I mean, she was ancient, hmm. you know, at that, I mean, she was already old. We're not ages like, on the show, Amy. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Amy. <laughs> She was old. Let's just she see was that. ancient. Well, well, which and she, to a first grader means like she was what, like thirty five. <laughs> oh no, she was older than thirty five. I was like, oh, yeah. great, lady. And, and it's like she'd already been teaching for twenty years. But but it was but it was one of those things. I started noticing that when I was used as the example for things that things that the other kids were doing that were not mm. on her rule list, she would make me do it. And then mom's mom's parent teacher conference, I think in the spring, I remember, I, I don't remember. I think I was told this much later. I don't think I was not told this in first grade, but that teacher told mom I had mental problems. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And then mom didn't put, you know, it was hard for her because, right. because she was just like, okay, well with teachers, you know, we respect teachers and this kind of thing. So just try harder. And I was just like, oh, Lord, please let this year end. You know, I was ready for that to end because I was tired of being the example of what not to do in front of the class, pulled in front of the classroom. So that's the year that I really started to notice that I was different. And I just wanted to just kind of 
you know, crawl into a hole. I wish the hole would just like a portal would just open up in the floor and that I could just go hide in it because there was no way around it because I felt totally American on the inside. And then, but when I would look in the mirror, I was like, Oh, you know, you realize you, but you don't understand any of it yet because you're what six. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So that's interesting. I'm curious. um, Like that's some of the earliest, like I know that, um, the kids are aware of that stuff. You know, it's probably around that same age that like my niece, when she was, mm-hmm. um, then she was like, pass me the, the skin colored crayon. Then it's like peach or whatever. Or she's like, why are we using, why am I called white? But like my skin tone is really more of a, you know? And so I think that they start making those associations early. Um, I'm curious was, so you're going through all of this in kindergarten, first grade, um, how much of this did you just internalize and feel like you had to deal with on your own? Were there any conversations with your parents or any well, adult figure really, around really like hard. what you were feeling? That was really hard because I didn't know how to put it into words. Right. I just knew that the other kids knew I was different and would make, you know, would say things or make fun of me. But I also made that, you know, like much later in life, I mean, I had to turn like 40 something before I actually really started understanding and putting the pieces together that I started school when the Vietnam veterans were returning. So Mm -hmm. a lot of the other kids' perceptions, I think, were clouded by maybe conversations they overheard Mm -hmm. from the returning veterans and that kind of thing. And so I, 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 I can understand where that's coming from you know, now I can completely understand, okay, environment has so much in the time period I was, because if you think about it in our lifetime or, you know, my lifetime, that was the third conflict in like 70, you know, like a span of like 60 years where we had a conflict with another Asian country. Cause we started Mm -hmm. world war two with the Japanese So the returning veterans, you know, there were a lot of returning veterans, especially if they had been imprisoned or if they had fought the Japanese, that clouds their perception of what the Japanese culture and the Japanese people. And then not 10 years later, you have Korea, you know, which Mm -hmm. was a shorter conflict, but there were still plenty of veterans that fought Mm -hmm. in that conflict. And then you go 10 years later and you've got Vietnam. So- And of course, when I was starting school was when all the veterans were returning. So there was a lot of, you know, just the whole culture, um, The it, it just with all the research I've done on history, on World War II, Korea and Vietnam conflict, um, you, you realize that that clouds the what people think. Right. And, and of course, these these perceptions, children are not born with these perceptions I truly believe it's something that you're taught. Absolutely. Well, and association, I think that and it's not necessarily bad association, but because of people's own experiences cloud how people think about it. And then those perceptions and little bits and pieces are passed on. Yeah, I think that that's so unique because, you know, kids, especially at that age, are just so sponge like. Like they mm-hmm. learn and they pick up so much. And I think it's, it goes, um, it's really interesting that you bring up kind of that uh, moment in time of the Vietnam War. Uh, just, you know, in, like in American history, uh, like we didn't even really have the language of like Asian American as an umbrella, you know? Oh, no. And so I, I just, yeah. And so like that, that all, that language was just starting to be developed. That kind of cultural identity in America was just starting to be developed. And so, you know, here you are, a kindergartner, a first grader, and, um, nobody looks like you. The closest oh, yeah, that you get is a South Asian, strange. which like, you know, for a long time, it, it took me a lot of mental work to think about like India and South Asia as part of Asia. You know, like I had to unlearn that like there's more to Asia than just East Asia, <laughs> you know? Well, and, and mom so- and dad were always really good about about showing us the globe, showing us where mm-hmm. we were from. And here are some other Asian countries because trying to explain this as a seven-year-old, you know, I'm not Chinese, guys. You know, it's like right. everybody thought, yeah. oh, well, you're Chinese. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm actually not. There's other places besides China in Asia because I can tell you because of my parents' globe or my parents' map because they always showed us where we were from in relation, you know, to where we were in Oklahoma so we could get a visual for how far we how far we came. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other Asian Asian countries, but 
but it's and and so I was just like, no, dude, Asia's a kind of a bigger place than just you know. I, I'm <laughs> from big. over here. <laughs> if you look at a map, not yeah, I'm not from China. China is not the the everything, and it's just. And then I, I was always interested in the um, like encyclopedias from a young age and everything. Like I said, I was in my profile, like paperwork. I'm a big nerd. So <laughs> <laughs> I was always really interested. I think I read. Much I still, bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> no, just in different ways. No, yes, that's a good point. <laughs> No, I try to, really I, you know, I say the same thing to my wife. She's like, oh my gosh, you're such a nerd. I'm like, really talk to me about fitness and macros and we'll see oh who's a bigger gosh. nerd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, we, that is something that both of us have uh, different nerdinesses in for sure. Uh, if you haven't already can tell out, uh, the, the level of history that Amy knows is much greater than mine. And that was always a big subject for me. Yeah. So mm-hmm. a lot of my history readings and a lot of my interest in other cultures was, was, I think, part of my early journey as a kid. I mean, it's a really unusual thing for a kid, right, to be, here, let's read the encyclopedia and let's read a little bit yeah, about Yeah, Encyclopedia this. Britannica. Yeah, which uh, For our dad, younger listeners, an encyclopedia is like the internet, <laughs> but prints it out into volumes and volumes of books. Yeah, I, I still say, have my... <laughs> my world book encyclopedia set and, and Clark and Clark's like, do we really need to haul that around? I'm like, yes, we need to haul that around. This is like the, the, my whole life's research and anything I wanted to learn was in these books. And yeah. I'm just like, I still have a shelf in the bookcase where all 26 of those fit. And I think I got those at age 13. So when mom couldn't Relics. find me, she could just find me in my room reading my encyclopedias. Yeah, they were in your room. I do remember. Yeah, that. I had them in my room. because I. <laughs> That's I where I would go read them. them. Yeah, yeah. Whenever Nathan read them, I was like, "Come on in, and you can borrow. Which volume do you need? What subject are you looking for?" But I always loved to read, and I. And then once I got into high school, I really got an interest in military history. Right. And that's when I started reading about because I wanted to. In high school, it was my history teacher focused on the generation that he grew up in, which was also mom and dad's generation so so the counterculture the vietnam the whole vietnam era the draft and all that kind of stuff starting up again i started really starting to research into that and i've really interesting stuff and it kind of i was able to ask mom and dad some questions about their perceptions on what they thought during that time yeah and it was really interesting how did those conversations go oh it was interesting because i just really wanted to know um just, just what they thought of it because they lived, mm-hmm. I didn't live through it and they did, you know, I mean, they, they were in Chicago in 1968 and that kind of thing, both in, you know, dad was in graduate school and that kind of thing. And so it was just interesting to hear what they thought about that. I know you've done a lot of research on, on just European war and world war. I'm in World War. I'm we're still World in World War II. II. I'll probably be a World War II till I have one foot in the grave until I can't read. <laughs> there's a lot in that. Yeah, there, there's a lot. It's really interesting. How much research did you do on the? I know you said briefly about the Vietnamese, Korean War, and um, uh, you know World War Japan. Did you do a lot of research on Korean War? Because I remember doing a book report on the Korean War. Did you? I've do watched any of that? a couple of documentaries on TV, but really the thing that surprised me. Um, with the research on the Korean War is really how little there really is. I mean, there's a couple of books Mm -hmm. and I've seen a couple of documentaries on it, but nothing like you see with the larger conflicts because that one didn't last as long as the others. Mm -hmm. But, um, But what got me into the researching the Vietnam War was just all the protests with it, all the, Mm -hmm. you know, half the people were for it, half the people were against it. And half the people liked the government, half the people hated the government at the time. And so it was that controversy that got me wanting to, okay, what is it about this? And then I read a book about a nurse who served in Vietnam for one year. um, And she was the one who was really instrumental in getting the Women's Vietnam Memorial Mm -hmm. built in Washington, D.C. I read her story and then that prompted me to read a whole bunch of others. So I really started that one with reading about the women who served mm-hmm. and then the women who served in World War Two at mm-hmm. and World War One at the time. So it's just kind of all kind of mm-hmm. melded yeah. into one thing. But the first book novel that I read that was 
historical fiction about World War II was Herman Woke's War, um, The Winds of War and War in Remembrance. And if you want to know anything about all of World War II and the buildup to it and, and, and the invasion of Poland in 1939, it's just read those two books or watch that miniseries because it is really, it's really in depth that they had to divide it into two novels. But you learn about all the military units and all the, it, it, it was, that was an eye opener for me. So I'm just curious. Um, well, I can hear my, oh, I turned on my, okay. Uh, I'm curious where, where are you now? Um, one of the things that we talk about a lot on the show is the journey of reconciling um, our adoptee identities, you know, with our Asian American identities, with uh, just all of our identities, right? And so um, I know that earlier in in this discussion, you had said like you were pretty content with where you were, like didn't feel like a, a coursing need to go find your biological parents, which I, I super understand. I'm like, I mean, I guess it would be cool, but I don't have that like drive in me to go and find them. But um, when you think about what it means to be adopted, what it means for you to be Korean American. Um, what are like the the kind of, I guess, flashpoint identity markers for you? What is that? And and has that changed over the course of, um, I guess, from first grade to now, I would assume it has oh, changed yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, it's changed <laughs> a lot because, because as, as I went through school, um, there were other Asian, uh, you know, other Asian, you know, more, you know, just more Asian presence in Bartlesville, mm-hmm. I was no longer the two percent. I was like the five percent, which was really yeah, cool. Yeah, way to go, the Hulk food chain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moved up the food chain there, and so uh, one of my good friends from elementary school, I think from third third grade on, was was Japanese, and then and then my be- one of my best friends, her family came to work for Phillips Petroleum Company from Germany. So there was, I was starting to notice that there were more international kids in the school and we just kind of we just sort of stuck together and became Mm -hmm. friends and it was nice because we didn't quite feel like we were any of us didn't really feel like we were so alone anymore and it was just and it was interesting to hear their stories about how they grew up and about um what brought them you know here you know to the united states and that kind of thing and of course they were raised Barbara was raised in Germany because she was from Munich. Her parents were from mm. Munich, educated here in the States. And then, and then, and then if, at sixth grade, they moved back to Germany. And then my friend Junichi, who lives now in California, he was, he was from, moved here from, to Oklahoma from California, but he was Japanese descent. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have many conversations with our parents about, adoption or about um... about adoption yes but not really about the race relation type stuff because i didn't really understand i didn't know how to put this into words until this past summer or Mm -hmm. this this past spring and i was just like um, somebody had posted an article somewhere probably patrick yeah or whoever (laughs) posted it somebody (laughs) posted this fantastic article about about the about the the, the getting caught between the two, the Asian mm. culture, knowing that you're Asian on the inside, but you're, you know, I, I'm Asian on the outside, but you feel American on the inside yeah. and you're not really Asian enough, you know, like to really be a part of this, but, but you're not really, but you're Asian. So you're not really American enough to fit here. And I was, I was like, okay, I copied the article and texted it to mom and dad. And I said, okay, I finally found it. I think I can finally now explain to you what it was that I was trying. Yes. And it was an eye opener for mom and (laughs) it was an eye opener for mom and dad. So mom called immediately and we talked about it and it was great. I really do believe that was the Yahoo Patrick article. I don't know who posted it because I didn't I look at it. I don't know. I just, you don't think that was yours? I don't eh, I don't know. You don't? Okay. I just Maybe. read the article and I thought, thought whoever posted this is brilliant because this is it. <laughs> Not who was yeah. it, just who posted it. Yeah, right. yeah, just whoever <laughs> wrote it or whatever. I thought this is no. this is great because this is exactly what I went through. I went yeah. through an elementary school, the rejection of the Asian culture mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. of myself and identified more with the American part of myself. Mm-hmm. And, and then, but as I got older, you know, I was, I was more accepting of the fact that I was of the Asian part that was on the, on the inside. So 
yeah, so that was that article. Real, whoever wrote that, thank you, because it's a brilliant, it was brilliant because I could finally explain, really explain to mom and dad, this is what I was trying to tell you for the last 30 years. But <laughs> So talk about where, talk about where you went from that moment of like really having this, finally finding the language, finally finding the words to describe your experience of, of the past 30 years. Where does, where do you, Amy go, Amy Sherman go next from there? What, what, what's your, what was your next step from that point? It's, I don't know. It's just, it's just more of an acceptance of who I am and the parts that make me, me. And I kind of felt like I had come full circle with some things mm-hmm. because I could finally, you know, with right. all the stuff with the Black Lives Matter movement. And I hate to bring that up as a, but that was one of the things that I kept because it brought back, you know, took me back to some of the, some of the, some of the things that I had faced or I had felt. And yeah. I'm not in the same way, certainly not in the same way. I'm not trying to, you know, like, I don't know, like capitalize too much on that, yeah. but, but it was because race was again at the forefront of everybody's minds. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of got me thinking you know, a little bit more. And then whoever posted that article, I was just like, this yeah. is it. We got to find who finally, the author of that I'm article I'm finally was. a 100% yeah. person, you know? So that it sounds, was, yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like you, it really gave you like a sense of closure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, and some sense of like, I've been trying to express this to people who love me for decades it's hard. and just it's haven't easy. been able to. And like, and just to have like, I mean, I'm annoyed whenever I have like a project and I have to wait on somebody and it's like been two weeks and I'm like, I'd like to get this done just to like get this out of my brain. So to have something like that sit in your brain for decades and then to finally, you know, read that, that article, have that language, be able to communicate with the ones that you love. And you're just like, this, this is what I was saying. And now, yeah, it just sounds like it brought you a lot of closure, which I think is so wonderful. It was just a really kind of a peaceful thing. And I'm like okay, this, you know, these two parts Mm -hmm. of me really make up what I am. And it's just a shame I had to go through, you know, what I, the, the, the painful parts of it that I went through to get there. But I'm just like, but I was just like, you know, but, but that helped me certainly become who, who I am. And it, it gave me some strength too, because I mean, I'm, I'm the first one, you know, to like, you know, sort of, I guess, you know, maybe stand up for anybody who does face that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of us out there, you know, in various times, like you, you look at the Gulf War when I was graduating from high school and ooh, 1991, you know, when the first Gulf War was going on, there was a lot of backlash against anybody who was Middle Eastern descent. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it's the, when looking back on it, it's the time period what is going on in the world at the time really shapes people's thoughts and perceptions of how they think about other groups of people. And to me, it's just kind of like, Oh, good Lord, we learned anything. And I'm just like, well, you know, yeah, we have. If you had been with me in my room with my encyclopedias, <laughs> you would know. Exactly. Had you read those encyclopedias? Dang it. Have you Dang seen it. volume V? Have you seen volume 26? Read it. Chop, chop. Yeah, we talked That's a really lot about funny. that on the show with the COVID oh, and the yeah. pandemic of last year and the, uh, all the anti-Asian hate that happened. Oh, yeah, year. that kind of was that in the forefront, the too. Yeah. And I've been mm-hmm. asked the question several times, you know, were you scared? And I was like, we haven't seen much of that because Oklahoma is not on a coast. Mm-hmm. It's not an entry point, you know, into the country. You got to go someplace else if you want to go to Oklahoma first. So that's Clark and I have always said, well, that's why nobody visits us. They got to go somewhere else and get on another <laughs> plane to come see us. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you know, our family comes to visit, but nobody else really, because they uh, got to go, funny. you know, planes, trains, and automobiles. You got to do all of it just to get to where we're at. But, but but there was a sense of security not being on the coast because a lot of the things that were happening were happening in like New York City or they were happening on, you know, Los Angeles or San Francisco, which which isn't great, you know, for right. anybody that lives there. But at the same time, being asked that question, I didn't feel unsafe at any point. Yeah. 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 I think that there is kind of a weird um, blessing and curse of being invisible when you are East Asian presenting, you know, that like it and 
yeah. especially in the Midwest, the, you know, the further towards like the heartland of the country you get, I think it's, it's easier to quote unquote blend in. And like, as you know, as an Asian American, maybe you don't think about it until you th- have to think about it and i think that that's something that we've all wrestled and come up against is like oh now we have to think about our identities and like have to work really really hard to break out of that invisibility tag you know and be like yeah. no i you, i need you to pay attention to me because i'm going and then again to not have that language is so frustrating so, but i yeah. was kind of okay with people not asking me questions about it because right i'm like okay dude i'm in the grocery store i just want to buy some grapes right you know it's like <laughs> Let me get yes, my I do candy speak grapes. English, <laughs> and it's like, and I'm yeah. thinking, oh, oh, I got asked, at, you know, after college one time, wow, you speak English real good, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I've been doing it since I was what 25 or something like that. I've been doing this for 25 years. I didn't yeah. just learn this on the plane on the way over or something like that, you know. Yeah. But I was also one of those people that I was kind of. I have an introverted side too, which a lot of people don't know. What? Oh yeah, there's a lot of times I just. I just want to be invisible and it's too peopley out there for Wait, me. So you're so saying that the home. little girl who would just like hide away in her room and read books has yeah, an introvert side? I never quite <laughs> Interesting. that. The books were the books were my favorite thing. I mean, I would read, you know, and that's how I would kind of decompress from stuff when I came home from school is I would go in and I would read. I'd pick up oh, I'm on volume twenty five. I need to finish that one. <laughs> and all I did was I play video games. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But you yeah, see where I still, that went. I still love to read today. So when things he get is smart and I'm not. Oh, please. <laughs> come on. You're a lot smarter than me and a lot of stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I'll call Nathan and ask him how that works. <laughs> but it's just one of those things where I still, you know, when I feel stressed or when I feel like, you know, OK, there's too much going on. I'll just pick up a I'll, well, now it's my iPhone. I'll just pick up my iPhone and read and I'll just read, yeah. you know, and it's just in that kind of brings me back, you know, back so as, down. So as far as your adoption story or just even meeting my uh, biological family, which I, I remember being very oh, that great was for, fantastic. For, for both. Yeah, both of us. But that was one of the best experiences of my life because <laughs> I was I, I don't know if I had a family that I could reconnect with so I could live that through him. And it mm-hmm. was wonderful meeting your, your brother and knowing that you had found your family. That was incredible. Did it, any of that spawn an additional interest to do more research about your adoption? Or no, cause I could just read your stuff. <laughs> she was like, no, I, I had my cake I was and good. ate it too. Okay. Yeah. Were you, Amy, were you the one that pointed out that Nathan and his brother walk the same? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but I've, I've but, heard he has a funny walk. So I just need to, I, in my head, he walks like this. So. No. <laughs> it's much more normal than that. He's like a more normal, a more normal person. Good. But when I actually met his brother and his wife, when they came for Calvin's first Dolchanchi, his yeah. first birthday party, I could see that they really looked alike. I was like, mm. there is someone out there that looks like, Nathan, I'm like, this is what he's going to look like in 20 years. Okay. You know, just, <laughs> Taking mental notes. No, Here but it was, a, it was I, I did the same. I, yeah, I wrote it, it yeah. <laughs> That was such an amazing experience to have, though, and to communicate yeah. with them. I really yeah. enjoyed sharing that with everyone, oh, our parents, with you. Yes. And it, it did. It was something that I thought about. It was like, okay, now, because we are adoptive siblings, but we're siblings, right? Now yeah. I found my biological siblings, which are still my siblings. We now it's like the, I the now family have six expanded. More siblings. Yeah, like I the whole kind family. Of feel. Not you got siblings I, on siblings on siblings. Exactly. Yeah, we got siblings wonderful. coming out of everywhere. But it was wonderful. <laughs> you and mom sibling. and dad you felt the same yeah. way too. They felt like their family had expanded some too. Yeah. But one of the That's things really that for me that I was I think interested is I felt more interested in finding more information about my Korean heritage and my um my biological family story. But one yeah. of the things was I wanted to know more about your story and, and things like that. So that's one of the questions I had was at the beginning of this uh, interview was like, do you have any more paperwork? Are there things that I didn't know about your adoption that, uh, that uh, maybe, um, you know, something that I just had forgotten about, or, but you're saying that there's, there's no, not really because paper. there was so little information, you know, to mm-hmm. really go on. Um, but it was, but, but, I, and, and you, exploring the Korean heritage and the Korean side of yourself, you now have these six siblings Mm -hmm. 
that can help teach you what it's all about, even if you don't speak the same language. I don't really have anybody that I can identify with to really show me, you know, who really has lived it, grown up in it, and who really knows a lot about the Korean heritage. So I just well, you kinda, have my six siblings. Though, yeah, now. I know. <laughs> I can't, you know, I, I guess I could type yeah. to them and say, hey, is there any is additional <laughs> re- things that you want to do with ado- uh, adoption or about just in general Korean history heritage? I would like to travel to Korea someday. Mm-hmm. I just need the time and the cash to be able to get there. Mm-hmm. I need the time off work to be able to actually go and give it a proper mm-hmm. visit. I don't want to yeah. just go for four day, fly over there for a four day weekend and then come home and think, yeah. Oh, okay. And then, but, um, what would you like to do there? I would what just like to, I'd, I'd like to travel. I'd like to travel around and see the different regions mm-hmm. of Korea. But, you know, if, if I always thought we'd go together yeah. sometime and I thought that would be a great trip for us to do together sometime. I just thought that would be neat yeah. <laughs> experience um, because I, what? I was laughing because Nathan made a face for the listeners at home. Nathan made a face when you said, I'd love for that to go together. He goes, like he had never thought about going with you to I, Korea I before. Happens. He goes, oh, good he goes, Lord. Like, he goes, he like, thanks for like, oh, putting me on blast. Really? He kind of, I've <laughs> mentioned this Go to before. travel with your sister, dude. I've mentioned this before. It's probably just been a year or two that's and a lot so That's true. I, that's true. I, no, I just I thought, I wasn't Nathan's Nathan over here like, that's a novel idea. No, you're fine. I just thought that was hilarious. He just goes. I hadn't actually. I was thinking more along the lines of. never thought about this once. I hadn't. I was thinking more along the lines of my family and taking like my my wife and my kids and stuff. That was like the and one we thing can that I do about. that. We can take we can as do far it together. as I can do totally. we, as uh, far as I'm now that you mentioned it, we can totally do that together. Yeah, we just have to wait till all the kids are old enough to appreciate it. But yes, we can do this. Uh, we'll certainly sorry. do a second no. trip. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, Amy, you're invited. Okay. Well, yeah, I hope. <laughs> That's funny. But I, I will also thought, be there. I'm uninvited. Yes, but, um, yes, I will also be there. I'll just show up. And Patrick, you guys can just show up. We can all make it a big family. That guy looks familiar. Yeah. We do a podcast together. Last question. Unless you guys have another question. <laughs> Going forward. Can you sit down? I only know you as sitting down. I just need to just double check. I'm not very familiar uh, with your legs. All right. But. Yep. That's him. <laughs> okay. Uh, last question. Uh, with uh, being raised in Oklahoma yourself and myself as well, uh, now raising your daughter in Oklahoma, uh, my niece, are there things that you have thought about uh, on the ways you were raised there that you would like to do for Lori as well? Well, my main thing is just, you know, is just, I guess, being there for her if she experiences anything like I've experienced, and thank the Lord she hasn't, you know, so because, because you know, her, her mom is is Korean, so that automatically, you know, it automatically eliminates some of the questions and that kind of thing. And so the atmosphere at school today for her that, like I said, at the time, there's more Asian presence in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there's um, other Asian children in the school. And there's other Asian, Asian kids that have been adopted in the school too. So, oh, cool. so that's nice. And it's, I, I feel, and they have an anti-bully policy at her school, mm-hmm. which I'm, I was very happy to see that because they really encourage the kids to learn about encourage each other, lift each other up. We don't bring anybody down. And I really like that. And all the Mm -hmm. teachers and the principal and everything seemed to take that pretty seriously. So that it was a huge comfort for me because first grade was the first place that I noticed that. So I was kind of like, "Mm, she's starting first grade. I'm, and, and I knew her experience would be better than mine, but at the same time, I just, I just don't want her, obviously don't want her to have to go through any of that. And so far she hasn't. So, yeah, but, but she did bring up some questions, you know, about because she would hear on the news or hear the other older kids and stuff like that, talking about the, the, the anti-Asian things that were going on on the coast. And I just kind of, and of course this was all during COVID too. So she's just like, you know, she knows about COVID. She knows, you know, so she's a little afraid of that. And Mm. then, and then this on top of it. And so I just told her that I don't think you have to worry about too much of that here because that's really happening and it shouldn't be happening at all, but it is happening on, you know, far away 
from here. So that's, that was how I explained it to her as an eight year old. But yeah. So one of the things that we talk about a lot, uh, being adoptees is like kind of the, just being on the journey of self-discovery and, um, identity reconciliation, you know, like talking about, especially the idea of like being Asian enough or American enough and things like that. And so one of the, the mental models that I've begun to form in my head is, uh, kind of similar to like, uh, the Camino, right? El Camino de Santiago in Spain where, and I think what, what I'm hearing from your story, Amy, is that, um, for you, you've found this place, you know, like you've hopped on the Camino, you, maybe you've hopped back off, you've hopped on, and and you've found this place of contentment with with where you are and who you are, I think largely in due uh, to that, that article and just kind of that those things. And um, it just reminds me that uh, there are so many adoptee stories and everybody kind of walks this journey at their own pace and has different checkpoints and different um flags or markers and and pl- places to go and like like patrick for example just sprints just marathon sprinting to places you know oh and, that's cool and uh nathan I and i are I like do that we'll uh we'll catch up with you maybe we'll catch an uber and meet up with you to the next place and you can catch up on you know what i mean and so um it's just it's nice like it's just it's really interesting for me to be able to hear uh, especially like with all of the history and, and the the research that you've done in that how much your history and your just natural curiosities and um, where you are in the world today and how the world is today has brought you to a place of like, you know, where I'm at now is good. And uh, even um, just on a, on a really small level, like being able to stand up for and advocate for uh, people who might face other types of discrimination, right? Oh, yeah. Not necessarily just racism, not necessarily just xenophobia, not necessarily just whatever, but because whatever, of your I mean, own, yeah, because of your own history with it, your own personal history, and then your own research into it. You're like, guys, have we not learned anything from like American history? Like we should move forward. So I think it's just, it's been really lovely uh, listening to you and, oh, ch- well, and thank hearing you. Your story so uh absolutely thank you and i can do some of it with humor too which so. you know we always <laughs> which is really important to our yeah, show and then so, my, yeah. <laughs> my sense of humor is like so dry and sarcastic it's like different from his i could never be a stand-up comedian i mean he could have been i think I you guys would be a great team i think you guys <laughs> would be <laughs> together i don't think anybody uh, but yeah. you would watch it but you know maybe well, our parents I mean, I would laugh you get laughs. Yeah, so. I know, right? We'd crack right. each other up, and would be the Give only me some phones. Laughing. Well, here's the deal: we're gonna take a tight. We're gonna take a a, a, a pause. You're gonna workshop your tight five and deliver it to us, and then when we come back, we will be jumping in with a snack item. I'm not sure what we're eating, but we'll know for sure when we come back. So here's the break, and uh, yeah, roll the break. We're good. So we are back with Amy Sherman. We are back for our food portion. That was a great interview. But today, I really wanted to give Amy something special to eat. Oh, good Lord. So we are eating worms. Oh, good grief. What? (laughs) Uh, uh, These are spicy worms. Yeah, they're like mealworms. Oh, good God. Nathan that's what we're going to eat today. No, that's not what we're eating. <laughs> so Seriously. We are actually eating this. Sorry, I what just had it? to play a joke on you. Oh, yeah. We are actually okay. eating a <laughs> rice cracker. I don't even know what these are. They are non-fried energy snacks. Okay. Crispy roll. What I don't know. What is, is what does your package say, guys? Because mine <sighs> is minimal uh, Oh, good best. Lord. It just says the ingredients, which all sound really healthy. So the outer outer thing says crispy roll, spelt with two eyes, not yes. <laughs> uh, grain and milk flavor, non fried and energy snack. Uh, yeah, and then it's just got some listings. What? It's lacto vegetarian. <laughs> <That's food>. <laughs> lacto <laughs> vegetarian so, food. Yeah. Oh, does so that mean if you are lactose, lactose intolerant, or does that mean if you do take lactose? <laughs> Like, I think if I think you are lactose intolerant, and if you are, you're a vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. So. The first ingredient is brown rice. No, uh, okay. it's not. What? There's whole milk listed in the ingredients. So, oh, there is. Don't, if you're lactose intolerant, don't eat this. Uh, guess so. <laughs> it has whole, mu- but, whole milk powder, the fifth item. <laughs> yes, but the, the sixth item, which is an oh interesting gosh, combination, is soy sauce. What? 
So it's got soy whole sauce. milk powder, but then the next ingredient is soy sauce. So I'm a little confused oh, by beans. that one. Yeah, I'm really confused. Okay, it's got my... beans. It's got uh, buckwheat. It's got corn. This is an interesting cracker. And I remember seeing it, and it came in a package of, I think, 12. Good lord. Okay, uh, these came together in a box, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So my favorite thing, it says like, expiration printed on the package. I was like, so I have to go hunt for the date when this is expired? <laughs> I was like, oh, it, it came in a bigger thing. So that, that explains it. Okay. So, but uh, hey, I like, don't know. It was an interesting pack. There was a couple other flavors. This was just the one that I picked up. It is the, uh, yeah. what is it? Milk and, what was the flavor? Grain it and milk. Flavor. Grain and milk flavor. Oh, so, Lord. Yeah. So no vanilla? It looks like a, what would you guys say? It looks like a sausage. I don't know. It looks like a white sausage, I don't a crispy know. rice sausage. It's really hard for me to open. It is hard. Yeah. It, it's Coming from my experience living in Germany, sausages are not crispy, but that's okay. <laughs> well, they are if I make them. Oh, good grief. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so are we supposed it to It kind of smells it? like milk. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's like, golly. Maybe like a cheesy popcorn. I know, what I'm right? getting it kind of <laughs> smells like popcorn on the outside. All right, here we go. It tastes like a giant Cheeto. It does kind of taste like a Cheeto, like a right? cheese puff. Like a I giant cheese the, puff. I won't lie. I thought this was on the verge of the corn cheese wet, cold <laughs> feeling, but I did. it went away. I had it yeah. for just a second, and then it went away. I was about it's to be It almost tastes like a little bit like popcorn. Popcorn? No, because the corn it's not bad. Yeah. It's not yeah. bad. Like crispy on the outside? I'd go buy these. It's got like oh, a buttery. I got it again. It's got oh. like a, it does have like a butter yeah, popcorn it does, like flavor, a butter like popcorn. an artificial one. There's like a, yeah. yeah. Oh, there is? Yeah, there's like. Mm-hmm. It's cold and it's wet. And I don't understand <laughs> how that's possible. <laughs> that doesn't sound very appetizing, Patrick. No. It's... Oh, Patrick's the king of unappetizing descriptions. Yeah. Are you serious? No way. Uh, a one You'll... time. I do a <laughs> one time on the product. I'm like episode seven. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey. We're on like we're 50 episodes. And you'll faster. never live it down. It's on record. Forever. No, uh, no. I like it. It's not, it's bad. not it's bad. It's better than it's I expected it was going to be. It's like a filling snack, I think. It's it's I an energy really snack. Another one. It's better than what I probably these are, so I'm okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I for, even... You did a very visual <laughs> joke for this audio for a, Sorry. Yeah, oh audio only Lord. medium. But the audio part was hearing Amy go, what? Wait, what? That was the funny part. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. That's what I get for telling so, that rotary phone story, Mike. Yeah, See, so I told you. For the listeners, <laughs> I showed her it's essentially a package with these little red uh noodle noodle looking things that look like they could be worms and so that's why i went with worms but they i think it is just rice noodles yeah it's like like a spicy some spicy rice noodle i probably wouldn't be able to taste my but i wanted to i just wanted to see your face sorry yeah well that's what i get for telling the rotary phone story and they tease me with these i love i'm very happy you you told that story (laughs) well actually it was detriment to you so i don't know if i i don't know if i like it as much but I will put it at the front of the episode if I edit this. This is, uh, (laughs) this is interesting. I I mean, I really, like I said, I felt like it was, uh, I felt like it was a giant Cheeto consistency, Mm -hmm. but the flavor, like you said, is like a buttered popcorn almost. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't hate it. It's like a, I don't hate it, but I, yeah, I don't know. So we like to like a vanilla popcorn, like a vanilla flavored, a vanilla flavored popcorn. Oh yeah. I have that all the time. Yeah, except it's in a stick form and it's, (laughs) you know, it's great. What are you talking about? So, Amy, would you eat these again? Mm-hmm. You would. Uh, what would you rate it? A uh, scale from zero well, to five. A zero from one to five? Yeah. One Probably to five. a three and a half. I mean, three and a half to a four. Okay. That's not something I I don't know as I'd want to eat it every single day, but it is kind of like popcorn. Yeah, I mean, it does. It's, Tastes like vanilla popcorn, and I love popcorn, so I, why not? And I love know? vanilla popcorn, apparently. Yeah, vanilla popcorn is good stuff. <laughs> Like I said, what is vanilla popcorn? Probably be better you keep than and you keep acting like it's a real thing. What is vanilla popcorn? It is popcorn? a real thing. What? What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've never had vanilla popcorn pop in my life. Popcorn. Go to Sprouts. Oh, yeah, and they yeah, have yeah. a vanilla the, flavored. Yeah. Skinny Pop popcorn. makes a vanilla it's really popcorn. Good. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and it's there really go. good. So that's what this reminds me of. And there's a reason I keep bringing it up. Well, I thought you were just making something up, no. and, and yeah. I, no, and then I forgot you were the queen of popcorn. Yes, 
obviously he's the the king of spicy noodles and telling his sister they're like mealworms. And I'm really glad I didn't have to do these because, I, like I said, I wouldn't be able to taste my dinner tonight. That's yeah, true. Spicy would have been funny too. I, I thought about that as an alternative. But oh my goodness! What about you, Patrick? What do you think? Heartburn. Zero to five. Uh, I'm gonna give it uh, three and a half as well. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I think that they've just randomly selected twelve grains that create <laughs> popcorn, uh, but it's not a bad flavor, and I would eat it again. So about three and a half. I don't know what would, I don't know what would good raise Lord. the rating. I didn't see that on the label on the back. Oh yeah, that there's tw- how twelve, get 12 healthy grains. grains. In this stuff? I don't know. Oh no, one of them is husked lotus. So what? that's interesting. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of cool. Huh. I didn't that know was that my lotus nickname needed as a child, came so. in a husk. What your nickname was husk? Oh. No, lotus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, Actually, mom and dad bow, bow, bow. used to call me lotus blossom when I was a baby. Yeah. So huh. lotus is a cool. cool. What did I call you? I don't know. Creighton, probably. You weren't calling her anything. You were just th- swinging rotary Throwing phones around. <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, no. Madam I, Librarian. So so Amy's <laughs> real name was Amanda, and I used to call her Amanda Panda. Yeah, that's what he called her. But me. then well, yeah, my middle name is Andrew, or Andy, and she would call me Andy Pandy. To so, get that, say. So I hated both names, and so at some point it was like stalemate, and I just stopped calling her that because I didn't yeah. really call it in return. All right. So it's, it's a good story. show. There you it's go. A, right into it's, it's at Andy thing. Pandy. Yeah. I can't wait to create a new I, uh, Instagram. I probably account. incriminated Twitter myself more with that than yeah, anything. Just Great. pictures of That's amazing. Um, uh, you can follow at Andy Pandy on Twitter. Yeah. No, oh, Stop no. It, so. no. No, 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 no. Don't That's do amazing. that to him. Uh, okay. So to round it out, I'm going to give this, you know, honestly, I'm going to give this a. F- Four and a quarter Ooh, out of five. That's a good. It's uh, good. I like it. That's a good rating. I think it's really good. My the only thing that's really knocking it down, and it knocks it down a significant chunk, is they are a pain in the butt to open. <laughs> uh, like super difficult. I can never get a clean open, so that's annoying. But otherwise, I mean, I really like them. Uh, I'm a fan of like little to go snacks and whatever. You have to so. tear it from the seam. That's how I did it. I just mm. kind of. Yeah, I'm just not good at tearing things. Oh, so. usually I'm Besides not my ACL. Oh, Anyways, oh. Um, it's, it's the jokes. Yeah. This is oh, a joke yeah. hour on the oh, Jockey Show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was my type five. Thank you. I'll be here every Wednesday. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that is all. Amy, if people want to get in touch with you, can they find you on the internet? Where can they find you on the internet? Wait, time out. Nathan yeah. didn't give it a rating. Ah, uh, he didn't? No. It's okay. I was just going to. All just- right. Never mind. No, I, I will give it a four. I'll make it quick. I agree. <laughs> I'm in the middle between all of you guys. It's good. It's tasty. I would eat it again. It's healthy-ish because all the grains. So yeah, four. Sure. Four is a good one for me. I uh, yeah, I like it. There you go. Not much to it. Go ahead. Continue. KJ. Right. Oh, zero. But- <laughs> The spicy worms, I would have yes, given a five. Zero. That would not have been a five. That's like a zero or a one yeah. for me. You never know. You might love. You might love them. It I might don't be. Know. <laughs> She's like absolutely not. So, Amy, where can people find you? Or I, I know if you want to be found. Yeah, if you want to be found. I don't think she wants to be found. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on Facebook, but oh, yeah. but I don't I don't know real this technological technologically challenged thing again comes into play because I don't really know how to change my setting to where people can find me. I've got it set to where people can't just randomly search for me. Bart. So you can Bart. ask me and I'll share her information. <laughs> you can ask me and I will not get permission to share her information. <laughs> if Nathan, if, if somebody contacts him through the John she show, that's fine. There you he go. Has my permission. Ah, uh-huh, there you go. Perfect. Permission. So send your this lovely messages official, to the John Chi show. This is his official forgiveness for th- hitting me with the rotary phone. Again, yes, with the rotary we phone. Got to yeah. it. I like it. We <laughs> okay, so if you want to get in story. touch with if you want to get in touch with Amy, you can find her at Andy Pandy on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Oh no, you uh, incriminated I'm re- yourself. I'm regretting me telling yeah. that Thank story. You. <laughs> oh, you're gonna love that nickname. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much again for coming on the show. It oh, was you're welcome. really, really fantastic. It was fantastic. So, thank you for having me. Yeah. You can, if you guys want to find me and so I can contact you, uh, connect you with Amy, it mm-hmm. would be uh, N. Nowak on uh, Instagram and, of course, Nathan Nowak on Facebook. Yeah, I respond well to email, so. 
I'll give I can you do right that. Now. I don't have to call Nathan I'll to give you that right out. <laughs> oh, KJ is chewing on some on some natural twelve, I think. So uh, right. you can find me. But, at but let me. Oh, go ahead. Can I say just one yeah. more thing, really quick? Part of the reason I was able to come full circle with my with my identity and with all of this is is largely due to our parents because they encouraged conversation, encouraged questions, and so home was home in the middle of all this stuff was just kind of my was kind of my happy place with things. Yeah, shout out to the parents, mom and dad. Yeah, yay, mom and dad. Thank you so much. I, I was going to do that during the show, and I forgot. Well, Sorry, mom. <laughs> we're having such a good conversation. We were. It was fun. And thanks for the encyclopedias. They got me the encyclopedias yeah. that got me through all my identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and I still yeah. look at them. I still have them. So all you young people, go read books. <laughs> yeah, no internet for you, even though technically the internet's more accurate. Nah, well, it's just updated. Yeah. Well, it's exactly. definitely it's updated. updated since 1986 <laughs> when the books were written. <laughs> um, um, go ahead. Okay. You can find me at KJ Rocky wherever I want to be found on the internet. And you can find me at Patrick in the world on Instagram. And then I will also tell you the other places you can find me at Instagram. Um, nice. You can send Patrick, us an where email. Where can people find the show? Yeah. You can find the show uh, at John Chi Show and on the social media platforms. You can send us an email to John Chi Show at justlikemedia.com. Um, we are going live in LA at the end of this month. Or oh, wait, cool. we might have already done we, it. We have really actually know. already gone uh, live. We may Thank you for everyone who messed with the timeline. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I forgot about the timeline. So <laughs> we had a really great live show in LA. Thank you to everybody who showed up. Um, if you want to really help us out and support us, you can go on to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to leave us a rating and a review. Really helps us not only get seen, but they're great messages, and maybe one day we'll read it aloud on the show. Um, cool. Other than that, though, Amy, uh, again, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us today. Uh, it was a really great interview. We got some really good laughs out of it. Uh, a new comedy <laughs> duo is brewing. Oh, good lord! In, <laughs> God. in the in wherever Oklahoma and Denver are, I don't think they're. Yeah, considered move the same over, other uh, famous the comedy West. duos. There's a new kid <laughs> on the, the block. West. Oh lord, that's the truth. I don't um, know. Yeah, but with, I mean, this is the end of the show, so we will be back next Wednesday with another episode. For until then, I don't know what I'm saying, Johnchi. Heyo, Johnchi. Heyo. <laughs> Bye. Bye.